A very good morning. It is 12 months ago uh, since we all signed up to the Aviation Industry Environment Declaration. And time has come to be straight and honest with ourselves. Have we delivered to our promises? Last year's summer declaration was rightly hailed as an important milestone for our industry. But the measure of our success is not in making declarations. Success lies in how effective we are in implementing them. In terms of emissions reductions, the air navigation service providers have been implementing many new flight paths across the world, as Giovanni indicated, in all phases of flight. Aspire in the Pacific, air across the Atlantic, as well as the European Airspace Efficiency Program of Eurocontrol, IATA, and CONZO, are proving that close collaboration among our aviation sectors can deliver real fuel and emission savings. CONZO itself has been most active as well. We recently published our Global Environment Efficiency Goals for 2050, which served as our input to the collective industry report to ICAO's GIAC. The report measures global airspace efficiency today and sets clear aspirations for 2050. Our research has established that on average, airspace is around 92% efficient today, though there are considerable regional variations in that figure. Australasian airspace, for example, is near optimum, while European airspace is the most fragmented, and that's why we're working on single European sky. At 92% efficiency, airspace is 4% more efficient than it was in 1999 when the IPCC first published its estimates of 12% ATM inefficiency. This 4% improvement was delivered while air traffic nearly doubled and is thanks to the measures such as RVSM. Conzo estimates that some 4% of airspace efficiency still remains to be recovered by 2050, as a final 4% is unrecoverable due to the many trade-offs and interdependencies in our global aviation system. These interdependencies are natural conflicts within our airspace. Noise versus CO2, flight level optimization versus contrails, safety versus economy, efficiency versus capacity, disputed air airspace versus direct routes, and civil versus military. Interdependencies are a fact of life, however, by working together, we may be able to minimize them over time. No doubt you will be wondering how CONZO members plan to deliver the additional 4% airspace efficiency by 2050. Well, this will be a Herculean task, as air traffic is foreseen to quadruple. Historically, airspace efficiency declines with every additional flight. Yet CONZO members wish to buck this trend as they look to improve efficiency in spite of the projected growth. To this, CONZO members will continually look at optimizing airspace, driving regional solutions while facilitating the hugely important ATM modernization programs such as NextGen and CESAR. To achieve this, we will have to act together in unison as states, aircraft operators, pilots, aircraft manufacturers, engineers, airports, and ANSPs 
we will need to agree joint solutions. When it comes to airspace optimization, the states as owners of the airspace have the largest contribution to make. Think of civil military coordination and disputed airspace and cross-border optimization, as well as the need for institutional changes to facilitate a more regional approach to air traffic management. Ladies and gentlemen, ANSPs are determined to raise ATM performance and to drive best practice throughout our sector. To facilitate this, Kanzu intends to launch a new operations committee uniting the world's ATM operations directors to coordinate airspace reform and operational efficiency. The creation of this operational committee will also permit us to raise industry-wide coordination of day-to-day -day operations. Kanzo members are focused on delivering reduced fuel burn. If we, the various aviation sectors, can unite as well, we should be able to deliver the additional performance improvements required to deliver a sustainable future for our planet. Next year, the measure of our success will be the depth of our cooperation. Thank you very much.